going on, guys? Welcome back to United to USF1. I am Brandon, your host here today. And as you guys already know, the Baku Grand Prix or the Azerbaijan Grand Prix was yesterday. And yeah, what do you guys think of that Grand Prix? That is great to see three different winners, uh, at least uh, three different names on the podium, uh, at least for this year. Uh, you know, great to see Daniel Ricciardo get his first win of 2017. Uh, great to see Botas, you know, edging out. Lance Stroll at the very end, uh, actually literally at the very at the race start finish line, um, just barely crossing before Lance, and then Lance obviously getting his well one surprisingly that he finished the race, but then two you know he he finished in third, you know he was almost in second, you know I think he lifted just a little bit too too early, but overall you know a great drive for Lance Stroll. Uh, as we know, there's plenty plenty of drama and. Uh, there's a lot of people getting triggered over, um, you know, basic over the, the one of the main incidents, uh, obviously between Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton on um, during the second restart of the second yellow flag. Uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not gonna give too much of an opinion on it. I'm just gonna say that you can brake without actually braking, hitting the brake pedal. Um, but with the FIA saying that they analyzed the telemetry saying that he didn't, uh, again, I'm pretty sure, like, you guys have seen me on Facebook probably saying that, hey, let's just see the telemetry then, just show it to us, uh, whether confirm or deny, uh, your analysis of it, and obviously, you don't necessarily, like I said, you don't have to hit the brake pedal to actually brake, you can just sort of slow down, and if you guys look at the, the replay, it does actually look like Lewis does slow down a little bit, but fault goes to Vettel for, you know, being a little bit too close, and, you know, he rear-ended him, and then he, you know, everyone calls it the red mist. I just call it road rage. He got some road rage and sort of, uh, you know, turned into Lewis. Uh, obviously, there's no footage um, saying, you know, like saying that he actually turned the wheel into him. But when you're going like this, you're probably like this, turning into him. And as he's looking towards, as you guys already know, from drive, like basic driving 101, wherever you look, you turn. So... He was looking at Lewis, so he turned into Lewis. Is what that's just my opinion. But overall, Sebastian was definitely driving too close. Probably if he wasn't so close, it wouldn't have mattered if Lewis brake checked him or not, because you would have been able to react. It does look like uh, Sebastian Sebastian was uh, going a little bit hot into that corner, at least for a yellow flag. So that's all I'm going to talk about. It. As you guys already know, they both did not uh, win the race. They they uh, Lewis came in fifth and Vettel came in fourth. Uh, you would think, like, even after Vettel serving his 10-second stop-go penalty, he would at least come out behind Lewis, but that wasn't the case after, you know, obviously Lewis had his headrest problem, so he had a pit, too, and uh, he got held up in traffic, and Vettel came out of the pits ahead of him. That is why you saw Lewis all triggered that Sebastian should have got more, uh, at least a more harsher penalty. Uh, there's even there is even some people calling for Sebastian probably would have should have had a black flag. Uh, that's sort of debatable. Uh, yeah, it was dangerous, but it was during a yellow flag. It wasn't during racing or anything like that. I say just let him race. I'm maybe that's just an American bias. Uh, but that's just that's just me. You know, I'm always a fan of letting them race. Uh, yeah, let's go on to more instances. As you guys already know, it is kind of going to be a different kind. A different kind of setup is my normal uh, reaction is just due to how long this race was and how much stuff happened. Uh, you know, as you guys already know, uh, Julian Palmer did not finish the uh, lap eight. He ended up having, uh, Julian Palmer ended up having smoke out of his back and radio that, uh, radio that he was having problems with his car. And then 15 seconds later, he ended up um, retiring. It almost seems like it was a, either a gearbox problem or a engine problem. Um, Daniel Kvyat retired. He ended up having a brake issue. Uh, he actually almost uh, took out his teammate Carlos Sainz. Well, Carlos Sainz avoided hitting him on turn on uh, you know at the exit of turn one since Kvyat went a little wide uh, when re-entering the track. Carlos Sainz was like right there. He didn't want to hit him, so he sort of panicked and spun himself around, sort of ruining his race from the start. Um, for Carlos Sainz, that is, he ended up coming. P8, but Daniel Kvyat ended up retiring. He didn't even get a chance to pit the, the pit, and uh, you know he ended up coming overall P19. Um, Max Verstappen in lap 13, uh, his fourth, he ended up retiring 
Uh, I think it was some complications with his car. I don't necessarily know exactly what it was. That is his fourth retirement and six Grand Prix overall this season. Very unlucky for Max, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And he's had to deal with it and move on. Uh, don't know why he's so PO'd. Uh, you know, that like he may want to switch teams. Those are the rumors. But I think he should just stick out with Red Bull and, uh, you know, see what they can do. Sometimes you just can't control how your car reacts. And uh, sometimes, you know, it fails. That's kind of the way, you know, that's, that's the way racing goes. It's not, not a, you know, it's not always a lucky sport for some people. But, you know, he just got the wrong end of the stick. And he ended up coming overall P18. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg, he ended up having a few complications with his car. Now, next up, we have Hulkenberg and Felipe Massa. They both retired around the same time, around lap 25. Uh, they both were overtaken by Kevin Madison um, to take P5 in, um, into turn one. Um, but you can see that Massa's car was bouncing around a little bit. Uh, his left, I guess his left front damper was a little bit damaged. And Hulkenberg, he ended up clipping the wall, and I think he overall like messed around with his axles. Uh, I'm not too sure what exactly happened to him. Um, that was around turn seven. And, uh, you know, he tried to complete the lap, but it just didn't work. And they ended up just retiring at lap P20, around around lap 25. And they come, and Hulkenberg came in P17, and Massa P16 overall. And uh, Sergio Perez, he actually, uh, you know, he damaged his car around lap 21. And then went into the pits. And then we had a red, then the red flag came in for debris and such you know, later, and somehow they resurrected his car, and it was back out on track um, for the second restart, and uh, he overall retiring at the end of the day, and he ended up having a, uh, he even had like a penalty for working on his car in the garage during the red, during the red flag, but it ended up just not really, re not really mattering, oh, well, Sergio Perez uh, at lap, you know, like he retired at lap, 41 and he respectively came p15 during the race Kimi Raikkonen also had the same penalty for working on his car um, During the red flag session so as did but he did end up serving a penalty and he ended up being he ended up finishing a lap down and p14 It's a very unlucky day for Kimi, you know considering on lap one. He was actually right like he's what was he like third or fourth? Uh, when Botas hit him because Botas ended up jumping the curb on, on turn one and, uh, you know, careened right into, you know, Raikkonen and completely avoiding Vettel and, and everyone else. Just, uh, you know, Botas basically coming second, but he ended up basically starting from the very last part of, um, from, you know, a dead last, considering that he ended up hitting him and he damaged his car and he had to come into the pits and all that fun stuff. But he ended up coming P2 and it's a great drive. For Botas, but yeah, that is uh, with Raikkonen coming P14. That is the basically the end of the like retirement sort of guys. And uh, now we're gonna go on to actual race finishers, and uh, you know ones that actually didn't have overall massive problems um, during the race. Actually, well, everyone sort of had problems during the race. It's just sort of whether they finished or not was the prop was the uh, you know the real story here. Uh, with Roman Grosjean complaining about his brakes all weekend as normal. Uh, even he even started saying that people that Formula One, the FIA or FOM, whoever is in charge of broadcasting the radio messages over the air, saying that you know they they specifically target Roman. Um, well, maybe they do, but overall, you always sound fran Roman. You always sound frantic on the radio, and it's always about the same freaking thing. Granted, yes, it's the same problem every year. I understand that you are frustrated. But maybe you should try not to fluctuate your voice so much to where you can pinpoint, like, you know, stress, a stress driver. And someone's going to pinpoint and someone's going to broadcast a stress driver just because it's more entertaining as a viewer to hear a stress driver talking about their car. So maybe be less, a little bit less vocal about your problems on the radio. That's just my point of view. I know I'm, I'm just Brandon Pesic. I'm not necessarily anyone uh, important or anything like that in the racing world. That you even want to listen to which i understand but i'm just a fan and maybe you should just shut your pie hole sometimes so you don't get attention drawn to unnecessarily attention drawn to you but yeah roman grosjean coming p13 and then getting lapped at like the very last lap by 
a lot of people. But um, yeah, P13 for Haas, unfortunately. Uh, but we have more good news. We have more news later. Stoffel Van Dorn coming P12 for McLaren. Uh, he ended up having four pit stops. He actually was battling uh, Marcus Erickson and Pascal Verlein all day. Uh, he actually had an opportunity to, uh, like, if he actually had a chance, if he actually would have overtaken both the Salvers, he actually would have had a double points finish for McLaren. The first one for the year. Uh, it would have been the first one in a while, actually. But um, unfortunately, he couldn't pull it off, and he had coming P12. Um, both Wehrlein and Erickson had, you know, pretty solid days. They actually could have done probably a little bit better if they maybe if they had a team principal. Um, they may have done... A little bit better, but not much better. But uh, Erickson actually only had three pit stops, and he ended up coming way behind Verline. Um, well, not not way behind, but he ended up coming right behind Verline with only uh, coming P11 and Verline coming P10. Uh, maybe that was just due to uh, the red flags and yellow flags sort of helping out Erickson in that sort of way. But overall, like the yellow flags just sort of bunched up the rate, bunched up the pack, that it ended up basically making a new race every single time. And giving a lot of people a better chance of actually winning. If it wasn't for the yellow flags, I'm pretty sure Ricardo would have never had a triple overtake going into turn one. The overall take, like, what was he, like P3 or 4? Um, before, yeah, he had, I think he had to be P5 considering that both, uh, well, P4 considering that he had to overtake both Sahara Force Indias. But then, you know, both Force Indias hit each other. And, uh, well, Ocon didn't knock himself out, but Perez ended up having to basically pit and they ended up having to retire, basically. And uh, it was really close to the red flag session, but Ocon ended up, you know, kind of pushed him into the wall, uh, made contact to him. In my in my opinion, Ocon was kind of forced out wide anyway. So I think because of that curb. But uh, overall, I just think, like, Ocon just had nowhere to go and he just had to go straight. And I'm guessing he should have... He should have gave, try to give Perez a little bit more room, but, you know, contact was inevitable. And, uh, you know, they end up throwing away a potential double podium for for them. But, you know, it was just unfortunate that they just couldn't pull it off. Um, but, yeah. Uh, now let's go to the top of the grid. Uh, Verlein ended up getting a point for Sauber. Uh, that makes two points now for Sauber altogether. And Verlein owns both of them. So he uh, at least is taking Sauber into the points, unlike Ericsson, but... Erickson was just a little was just one place off of scoring points. Daniel Ricardo, Valtteri Bottas, and Lance Stroll, as you guys already know, as I already said, are the three podium guys. Uh, Massa actually had an opportunity to uh, be on the podium, but you know, unfortunate things happens, and that's just the way it rolls. But congratulations to all three of those guys for getting their podiums. Stroll looked like the like the happiest boy a little li alive. I like. I'm not saying that you know he's a He's a future F1 champion or anything like that, but great drive for him. And, uh, you know, he, he avoided making mistakes. He avoided all the carnage. He avoided the debris, which was everywhere, by the way. And, uh, you know, he didn't make silly mistakes like he has been in the last couple of races. And, uh, you know, he didn't get mixed up with Carlos Sainz or anything like that. So great drive for Stroll. I'm sure you would rather had P2, but I'm sure P3 is you know it's very satisfactory for him and Williams very solid points for those guys and uh, he looked like he looked so ecstatic I couldn't even uh, you know I was just happy for him you know I wasn't I wasn't trying to be a hater or anything like that congratulations to all three of those guys for for uh, you know for the podium finish great great drive for from all three of those guys especially Botas coming in from basically last to get second so great drive great drive from everyone I guess. but um yeah. Sebastian Vettel coming P4 and Lewis Hamilton P5. You guys already know the drama with that. Uh, what do you guys think? Well, do you think Hamilton deserved a penalty uh, for brake checking or lack of brake checking or what have you? Um, or do you think uh, Vettel should have got a black flag for running into Hamilton, whether you believe he ran into him or not by accident or, or on purpose? Kind of irrelevant. Do you think he should have got a black flag? And uh, do you think... That um, you know, Vettel should have got a harsher penalty overall. Uh, maybe 10 second stop go penalty, as you as we can see from the results, definitely wasn't long enough considering Hamilton was, you know, slowed down and couldn't overtake Vettel even after his his pit stop. So uh, overall, maybe Vettel should have got I don't know 15 second stop go, but I've never heard of that before. So yeah, and then uh, Esteban Ocon coming P6, very solid solid points for Ocon and Force India. 
but I'm sure they would have wanted more. They had the potential for more. They actually had a like if uh at the red flag at, like after the Vettel Hamilton mix up after they dropped off from P1 and 2, it would have been Sergio Perez and Esteban Ocon being P1 and 2. Who knows if they would have held on to the lead till the till the end of the race. Uh, one can only speculate if they could or not, but they would have at least been in P1 and 2 um, going into the final stretch of the race. But uh, my boy, K Meg, coming in P7. He was actually third at one point in time before he ended up getting caught up by the faster cars. Um, overall, great drive for K Mag. He avoided all the uh, the car that seemed to work for him. Uh, didn't seem to be working much for Grosjean, but it seemed like the brakes and everything set up overall was working for Magnussen. Maybe it was because we had to run like a little bit less downforce for this track. And, uh, you know, it's very fast. K Mag's had, you know, a very rough start to his F1 career, but he seems to have been finding his feet lately for Haas. I hope for more, po uh, for more points from him. And uh, I hope for him to, you know, be with us for years to come. Carlos Sainz coming P8 for, uh, you know, for Toro Rosso. He ended up having three pit stops. Uh, who knows if it would have actually been a better result if he didn't spin himself out on lap one. Um, you never would have known. Um, he, like, one can only speculate if he could. But he ended up coming, you know, eight seconds behind Madison. But that's kind of irrelevant because, like I said, he sort of messed up his own race by spinning out on lap one. But now, the biggest news of the day, even to me, above Lance Stroll, above the Hamilton Vettel drama, Fernando Alonso coming P9, who would have thought would have been my headline of the day because that scores McLaren its first two points, not just one point, two points to the Constructors' Championship and the Drivers' Championship for Alonso for McLaren Honda, making, um, you know, the first points of the year, making McLaren, at least McLaren, you know, at least one car. And one driver is better than both Saubers. It looked, it was fantastic to see Alonso finally, uh, you know, out dragging at least a Sauber and actually racing some cars instead of actually just, just pouncing around the, <laughs> pouncing around the track and kind of just lollygagging. It's like, it looks like a car that shouldn't be there being lapped like twice or three times. is not necessarily fun for anyone, necessarily a two-time world champion. And, you know, a very accomplished driver in Fernando Alonso. And um, even McLaren, they like, that that team is so prestigious. It should not be that far down the grid, at least when it comes to, you know, pace. But, uh, yeah, Fernando Alonso coming P9, uh, two points for McLaren. You know, that's just, that's just great for him. Though, Fernando Alonso is my driver of the day above anyone else. Fernando Alonso is my driver of the day. Which, speaking of, please list below who your guys' driver of the day is for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And what do you guys think? Uh, who is, well, basically rank them in, in a set of three. Who's your first? Who's your first choice driver of the day? Who's your second? And who is your third? Alonzo, Botas, and Ricardo. I understand that Stroll got his first podium. But, uh, you know, he just sort of just didn't make any mistakes. But I think Ricardo making the brave triple triple overtake, dive bomb into turn one, and Botas basically coming from last to first, uh, last to second, are definitely outranked strolls just staying out of trouble. At least in my, at least in my opinion, it's not worth much, but at least in my opinion, those are my top three, Alonzo, Botas, Ricardo. Please list below uh, in, in the comments who your guys' drivers of the day are. I would really appreciate to get your guys' feedback, uh, only because, you know, I'm just curious. I'm a curious guy. I am a curious guy. But yeah, guys, that does it for my overall roundup reaction to Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I thought it was kind of long. It kind of reminded me of like, you know, Monaco last year, even without the rain, but only without the rain. And, uh, you know, and Brazil last year as well, again, without the rain, um, only because of just all the delays um, for that. For that race, I also had like a lot of plans going on, so I ended up having to delay a lot of things just because you know that race took forever. Even though I didn't watch it live, I watched it on DVR. Thankfully, I actually recorded the show behind it, like I always do, because I learned from last year, from Monaco last year, that you know tracks, uh, you know that get a lot of yellows will end up just running way over time, and uh, you know I end up like missing like half the race just due to you know it went way beyond its broadcast time and DVR time, so. Uh, I find that quite annoying. But yeah, uh, Sebastian Vettel had him having the fastest lap of the day at a 143.4.
Uh, here are the current driver standings and constructor standings for the after the ba Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I keep on wanting to say Baku, but it's just the Azerbaijan Grand Prix is in Baku. But um, <laughs> yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Drop a like uh, for USF One for the Baku Grand Prix for Formula One for Daniel Ricardo. Give me a just I I just I would really appreciate a like. Subscribe below if you are new. I will always be giving race reactions and you know, overall roundups. And I'm trying to get back onto, uh, you know, weekly videos, at least maybe even possibly daily videos. Uh, if I get a chance, um, about random subjects, all formula one related, of course. Um, don't forget to leave a comment below who your driver of the day is. Uh, what was your highlight of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix? I would really like to know, but yeah, guys, I'm Brandon with USF one. Thanks for watching. Peace.